Welcome back to the shop guys today we have yet another update and another problem with the GD Pass 4 we have actually a massive design flaw now I'm going to guide you in every step that you will have to do in order to fix it this is not going to be a fix it is going to be fixable by a firmware update we have to implement a new macro code we have to put that macro code into your slicer and then we can bypass the fault that you are going to get which I'm going to explain you right now apparently when you are heating up the chamber for my it's about 60 degrees or it's 50 or 55 it doesn't really matter as soon as the build pit drops past a certain point you are going to choke off the airflow from the chamber heater and it's going to cool down your build volume which is going to trigger a fault I'm going to show you the trigger right now so basically the temperature is stable at 60 or 50 degrees the build plate is choking off the chamber heater your temperatures are going to drop and then you will have an irreversible fault and you are going to lose your print and it is done so you are probably going to be in a 20 hour plus uh, print for a full build height you are going to lose all the filaments that you are putting on the chamber so in order to fix it we have to implement a macro but first let me show you what the problem really is by getting close to the gd plus 4. So right over here you can see this is the exit of the chamber heater all the hot air is going to come out of here and it is going to escape into the build chamber and it's going to circulate into the chamber and heat it up. We have the heated bed over here and watch what happens when the heated bed is going to get low enough. You can see up here that they are using folded over steel and the folded over steel is also on the side of the exit and right now you can see we are almost completely blocking the exit of the chamber heater. So right now we can see that the exit of the chamber heater is all almost completely blocked off there is no way for the air to escape there are no side vents so all the air is going to be obstructed by the build plate now apparently this thing is glued in I was thinking about trying to remove the cover and do some modification on it but the macro actually uh, fixes everything so right now I'm going to show you what the actual problem is I hope all these chamber heaters are mounted the same way normally I run the extraction fan just a little bit about 10 or 20 percent and this is to get a little bit of an under pressure so the air that this is escaping is escaping through the carbon filter at the back okay so everything is heated up we have heated up the build plate and we have heated up the chambers we can see right over here we heat it up to 60 degrees C we have the heated bed at 90 and I also enabled the uh, exhaust fan for 10% which is usually what I am running like I said just to get the fumes past the carbon filter instead of letting it leaking out out of the windows otherwise we have a lot of ABS stinkiness going on what we are going to do we have already homed all the axes and we can see right now right over here we are at 31 millimeters or we are at three centimeters of the built height now I'm going to start off at 260 millimeters so the build plate is dropping right now and we are probably going to see because I already tested this that this is going to be perfectly fine we are at 260 millimeters and I can still see that the chamber temps are absolutely perfectly fine there is no funny business going on but we can see that the frame of the build plate is starting to block off the chamber heater but like we can see it's still not a problem so let's drop it even more down below to let's say 270 millimeters so we have asked another centimeter now it is blocking off or choking off more and uh, let's see what is going to happen to our heated chamber and right now we can see that the chamber is actually starting to struggle we have 59.7 degrees celsius and that is because we have actually set up uh, the chamber circulation fan so we can see we are starting to lose it it is trying to compensate i'm going to give it a few minutes and see if 270 millimeters is going to be an issue or not we can see that the chamber actually corrected for it and we now have again the 60 c celsius we are at 277 millimeters and we can see that the temperature actually started plummeting so we set it to 60 58.7 six five and this is going to continue until it is going to trigger the fail safe so let's just wait how long it takes uh, until it is going to be that uh, at that point so we are a few minutes and we can already see we are dropping to 53 degrees celsius on the chamber the thermal protection sensor of the chamber which is in the fan i have tested it 
is already reading 121 degrees because it is getting choked off. We can see it right here, the top line. It is going to read 120 and when it is just functioning normal, it is more in the 60 to 70 degrees range. And I'm pretty sure that the fan right now is almost completely blocked off. So depending on how hot the protection sensor gets, once it reaches 130 degrees, you will have a thermal fault. But I think that the chamber is going to drop uh, sooner than the protection sensor, but they are correlating to each other. So we can see right now 51 degrees and the chamber sensor is still getting hotter. At 130 degrees, the chamber sensor is going to uh, trip the uh, fail safe and the chamber temperature, I think is going to be any minute now, is going to drop. Yep. Right, right in front of me, it only took around five minutes. We can see the fault right over here. Heater chamber not heating as expected. So we can see we actually have a massive fault on this printer. Now the print that you are doing is completely lost and we are going to look what the position is of the build plate to see how much it is blocked off. So we can see this is the build plate just sitting in front of the heater and this folded lip right over here is the same on this side. So this is, I would say, 75% completely blocked off and it is not going to be enough to sustain the temperature in this printer. Plus four is back. Now it's time to show you how we are actually going to fix it. We are going to go to configuration. Then we have the g-code macro.cfg. You want to open that, just one press is going to be more than enough. And then we want to add a little bit of code, which is going to be this little thing right over here. I'm going to put it in the description down below. You can just copy and paste it. Now, one thing you want to make sure is that there is no space before that code, because if you are doing that, it is just not going to work. So this needs to be an orange indication. And right now we have set the code, but we can adjust the things a little bit depending on how bad your unit is going to be. So we can see right over here, there is a value and my value is set at 260. 70, which is going to be millimeters of the build plate. Now you will have to do some testing when your printer is going to be very problematic. Now in my case, I have set the margin a little bit lower to 270, so I have the seven millimeters of play. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set this number to uh, one, which is going to be one millimeter. We are going to uh, save and restart the printer. And now we have changed it to one millimeter, which is actually going to be very handy for me to show you off what is going to basically happen. So the first thing that we are going to do is going to be the same as previously. We are going to set our chamber temperature to 60 degrees, our heated bed to 90, let it heat up. And then we are going to do a little bit of a test print and see if the chamber heater is actually turning off as soon as we have passed the one millimeter point. Also, another thing you want to do is you will have to add the code to the layer change on your slicer. I'm going to show you a screenshot on how that is going to look like. So every time the printer is going to do a layer change, it's going to check with that macro to see if you have passed the point to turn off your chamber heater. So you will have to copy that little bit of line into the layer change G code on your machine in your slicer. Here's a screenshot. You will have to copy it or it is not going to work. And you will have to do that for every slicer that you want to use with the GD plus. Four. So if you want to do the same testing, I have actually pressed the filament color so there's no filament going to be extruded on this little test right over here. But the filament is still in the sensor so it's going to think that there is filament present in the nozzle. Which is going to be a great test. If you want to test it out, you can do the same. You can change up the macro as much as you want. And uh, in this case, we have set it to one millimeter and we are going to do just a very quick test to see if that is actually going to be the case. Okay, the bed mesh is done. We can actually see that the chamber heater is actually powered right now. And now we are going to look at what is going to happen once we pass the one millimeter point. It is going to go really quick. So yeah, let's look. So we still have power. We are rising very quickly. We are passing the one millimeter point and we can see right now that the chamber heater is off. We can see that it's working really nice. We can see that this is going to fix all your problems if you are going to do high temp full build plate prints on this machine. Is this going to be fixed in firmware? Nope, this is not possible to be fixed in firmware. The only fix that they can do is redesign the chamber heater to be not blocking off when the build plate is going in front of it, probably with some side venting 
uh, yeah, so that when the build plate is in front of it, that there are vents on the side and especially on the back side of the uh, printer so that when the build plate is going to block the exhaust, it is starting to push more on the side. So 3D, definitely a massive issue. And for all the people that lost their print and a kilogram of filament, I'm so sorry for you guys. This is absolutely such an oversight and I am pretty sure that GD did not test this printer up to 280 millimeters when the chamber heater was actually running. So this is a massive epic fail and they need to fix it right now. Now, luckily there is a temporary fix for you guys. You don't have to do anything stupid like trying to pull the glued fan off and all of that. This actually blows my mind that stuff like this is actually getting delivered at people and everybody, even you, is going to benefit from changing some code lines because this is just such a major issue. And of course, everybody is going to say, I am not printing up to 280 millimeters until you do. And then you are going to cry your eyes out because you just wasted 100 bucks on filament and probably five or 10 bucks on just the electricity doing uh, something useless. Okay, so this is going to be it. Uh, thank you so much for informing me of this issue. I haven't found it out myself. Somebody reached out to me and the macro is actually also not mine. It is provided by somebody on the Reddit thingies right over there, uh, on the GD subreddit, I think it's called something like that. Uh, somebody provides the macro so you can change it uh, to whatever you want so the heater stops and you don't get your fail prints. So this is a massive community effort to push this macro outside and my job right now is just to inform you on how to implement it in your system and hopefully uh, yeah, save you from wasting a bunch of filament trying to figure it out yourself. Okay, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching and guys, I see you in the next one.